I'm Tim. And I'm Doug. And welcome to March 2022 Monthly Melt Crowdfunding. Yep, you finally got it right. I, I, I almost said crowd surfing. That's not our channel. Uh, well, we could do a crowd surfing segment. Yep. The last concert in Hershey apparently had lots of crowd surfing. But, uh, so we're going to talk about three different games or game accessories, or I have no idea what Tim picks. So who knows? Well, three something of each. Yeah. Uh, we're going to start with me. And um, so the my first game comes from Kickstarter. All mine are from Kickstarter. I actually didn't look at... Um, game Found. Game Found. I was going to say GoFundMe. Yeah. yeah. Not many <laughs> games on GoFundMe. Uh, game Found, or uh, apparently you found another one. Uh, my, I got one from Indiegogo. Yep. So, but all three of mine are from Kickstarter. And my first one is Hot Rod, a roll and write revolution game uh, by Benny and John Sperling. Uh, this is um, uh, Derek Dooley, I believe is the gentleman's name, who has put these out. Um, some other games that he has put out has been Planes, Trains, and Argyle, okay. and Train in Vain, and Wild Wild West. Now these are all these like micro roll and write games. He's put out a bunch of these. Uh, in Hot Rod, it's one plus players get to assemble and upgrade hot rods, build tracks, race across four different trains. Um, and this is a print and play one. Okay. Um, and I was going to pull it up on my, my phone to tell you how much it was. I think it's $5 okay. um, for this, this Kickstarter. Again, uh, I've pitched a lot of these lately, the small print and play roll and write ones or print and play ones. Um, I think it's a good way to go. I, I missed out on the last one that I talked about. And I believe it was in our last crowd surfing, crowd sourcing. Funding. Yeah, crowdfunding, crowd sourcing, crowd something. Um, I believe that was a $3 one. I, I forgot to, to actually go do it. This one's $5. Um, I might back this one then. I'm telling you to back it, so, you know, I would back it. Um, so, again, one of our players, you get to test uh, their best cars against drag strips or road track. Uh, takes 30 to 60 minutes for the game. Mm -hmm. uh, and you use dice to build tracks, you collect hot rods, and you upgrade your, your car. Um, and I believe there's 25 turns in this game. That's okay. what it is. Because every fifth turn, players score. Uh, yeah, it is twenty-five turns. Because uh, every fifth turn, you score a bonus card that has specific requirements. Um, and if you're falling behind, you don't have to worry. You can still score a card or points late in later rounds. Um, and then that that are half those points. So if you score, like let's say, I, I believe if you score. If you're in like the third round, but you can score the first card, mm -hmm. you can score it at half those points. So you still can score those and, and catch up. I believe that's how it works. Um, then at the end, you get to run each of your upgraded hot rods on an individual track. Uh, and you try to carefully target your cars to specific terrains so that you can cover the best array of tracks and earn the most points. Okay. So for $5... Um, I hate this. I like racing, so I, I might uh, have to check this one out. And again, that's Hot Rod, a roll and write revolution game. And oh, it ends March 30th. So by the time you. Well, this segment will come out before then. Okay, so it ends March 30th. Yep. Uh, my first one I'm suggesting is the one from Indiegogo, which there's not a lot on the platform anymore. Uh, this game is called Tech Chess. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I would personally back it, but I wanted to bring a spotlight to it just because how unique and different it was. Uh, when you hear Tech Chess, what, what do you think the game would be like? Technical chess? Okay. Well, it's a card game. Okay. Um, whereas these, these cards that the, the guy has created that go from 1 to 13 and you play these cards in a 6 by 6 grid that you make yourself 
and you play with two kings, one queen, two rooks, and six pawns. Okay. Now these 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 are all in card form, but the cards on them have powers. Okay. That you can either upgrade, change, reverse characters, and um, there's also knights, two knights as well. Okay. So you can, on your turn, you can either move your cards, which they all move in different, unique ways, opposite of chess. Okay. But you could also uh, change your card into something else, twice per game. You could equip cards to your pieces. So this is just a card game? Sort of, because you set it up in front of you in a grid form freely, because there is no board. So okay. I put out, you know, my, my row of six and my row of six, and you put out your row of six and row of six. And then there'd be two blank rows in front of us, technically. And the goal of the game is to capture both of the player's kings. Okay. I watched this video four or five times. I didn't quite understand the rules just because it was such a intense game. Okay. But, you know, I thought this is a... This isn't a company because, you know, on Kickstarter and whatnot, it's always, uh, yeah. we're CMON, we need your money. They don't need our money. They, they just want to have a direct source kind of thing. Now, this is an individual who came up with an idea. And he wants to make the game. He's looking for 500 bucks. He's currently at zero, but has 12 days to go. So, it's fairly yeah. new on Indiegogo because I think they only get 15 yeah. days, something like that. So, his ends April 3rd. Uh, if nothing else, check out his uh, the the page check tech chess on Indiegogo just to see if this is something somebody would be interested in. It's fifteen dollars for the deck, and like I said, it's such a now you get everything. It's not collectible or it's just this is this is a single deck okay. that contains the game. I uh, I'm assuming the rules are in there because it shows in a deck box. So I guess yeah. you could have the rules in there yeah. to be forwarded. Um, but if you really like chess and want something completely different, I think this would be the way to go. The, the only movement I did remember is... If you like chess and you want something different, get Onitama. Like, the king can move two spaces in any directions. Uh, the knights still move in L, and, like, the pawns can move, like, three spaces forward. <laughs> But it's it's a very unique game that somebody's trying to get made. I guess just published by themselves. Yeah. Um, but that was Tech Chess. Um, uh, by well, it's not a company, but Benjamin Chang. I would say C H E U N G. Chung. Chung. Um, still a little bit away from his goal. Uh, it's interesting because Indiegogo, you don't have a set goal, like a fixed, like he's asking for 500, but next to it says flexible goal. So I'm not quite sure what that means. Yeah, it means it's flexible. Well, no, like I don't know, like if, if like only 12 people back this, yeah. does it still happen? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not very well with Indiegogo. But like I said, something to check out, that's Tech Chess. Okay. And we'll go back quick to my first one, Hot Rod. Mm -hmm. Um... So they did meet their goal. Okay. Their goal is actually a hundred dollars, and they're at five hundred. Okay. So that that has funded. Um. So my next game or games in this case is six greeting card games, uh, designed by Emily Dix of the Dark Imp. Yeah. Uh, and so they're known for other placemat note card. Uh, and coaster style games. They've done a lot of this style of game. Okay. Um, and it ends uh, March 23rd uh, is when this uh, ends. Ends, but I was going to say. Funds? Well, no. Uh, project ends. Okay. Uh, I couldn't think of the word project. Um, so there are six greeting card games, and I want to make sure I, I get them all right here, so um, bear with me. So the first one is uh, Splinter. It's a paper-cutting card game. Okay. Um, so in each round, you'll be given a task 
uh, but you have to choose how much paper to use in that task. Um, how much paper you need to create um, uh, an ingenious standing sculpture, build the highest tower, or fly a paper airplane the farthest. Uh, but be warned, you only have one piece of paper for the whole game, and you don't want to run out. That's the game on this greeting card. Okay. So um, you need a, a piece of paper paper uh, to go with that. And on the greeting card, it gives you the different things that you can choose for that. Uh, next up, the game is called Enemy Lines. Okay. Uh, it's a head-to-head -head strategy game. Uh, to stand off old enemies, go head-to-head. -head. Your aim is to get three of your battleships across no man's land and firmly within the enemy lines. But... Uh, don't get too distracted. You must protect your ships and your home territory or you'll find yourself sinking quickly. So it's sort of like Battleship. Okay. But you're trying to move the ships from your side of the board mm -hmm. to your opponent's side of the board. Okay. So it's like moving Battleship. And again, it's all played on the greeting card. Uh, now the greeting card does have a side where you can cut out the little ships, ships and everything. The next one is Guess How. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a cooperative legacy game. Uh, the pawns need to get uh, home, but their movement is restricted. Uh, as a team, or there's also a solo variant in this, uh, it's your job to help them. After a square has been vacated, it's blocked and can never be returned to this game. This game has advanced legacy mode where you take on four different missions and permanently change the board. Okay. So, again, part of the greeting card you cut and things like that. Um, again, just a nifty little idea. So these are all one play? Game. No. No, because like that other one, you, you cut out the ships and you... Uh. Um, then in the drawing room with the hatchet mm -hmm. is the next one. Uh, this is a cutthroat programming game. Um, this is a kill or be killed uh, situation. Hide a weapon, find another player's hidden weapon, and do as much damage as you can. Okay. Uh, program your actions, move around the house, search a room, question your enemies, activate powers, use your weapons, um, and kill players become ghosts, but may not, but may still kill others. Um, so you want to be the last living person standing in that, that game. Um, snakes, ladders, and a pogo stick is, is the, the one, another one of these. Um, again, most of these seem to be one to four. This is actually three to five. And it's a race. First cross the finish line wins. Uh, you know, place your workers on actions to move forward, backward, swap places. Uh, with another player, if you manage to grab the pogo stick, you could bounce in great distances, but you can drop uh, from pu and push you yourself back. It's shoots and ladders, mm -hmm. or snakes and ladders, but with a pogo stick at it, and a greeting card size. You know, so, again, you're sending somebody something quirky. Yeah. Uh, another Life is an economic action selection game. Uh, you lost almost everything in a shipwreck, and now you need to try to make a new life. Okay. Um, you know, improve your health, wealth, education, travel to different islands. Uh, you'll take actions, good planning, and uh, pirate shenanigans will help you uh, get to the top. So, again, it's, you know, worker or action selection. There's, you know, doesn't give you a whole lot in, in the description. But uh, it looks cool, cool artwork on that. But again, they're, they're greeting card size, and they don't take very long. So that's, to me, that's one of the big things. Okay. And I will tell you how much they are. Uh, six greeting cards games, uh, $24 okay. for six of the greeting cards. Or you can get three packs of the six cards uh, for $64. That's not too bad. So, again, that is six green card games, and that's by Ellen Dix, and ends March 23rd. All right. 
Uh, my next crowdfunding game is a a video board game of sorts, I would say, because it's a video deck builder. Okay. It's called uh, Hexarchy, like anarchy, but yeah. with the word hex in front of it. it. It's a historical deck building strategy royale game. Um, it's, it says it takes uh, uh, inspiration from The Sims, Catan, and uh, Hearthstone. Uh, okay. Basically, it looks like if you've ever played a civilization game, it looks like that, but they claim you can play it within an hour. It's of, you know, several hours that each turn you'll be dealt cards that you can buy different cards. Uh, and all your actions are based off what you have in your hand instead of like, you know, in civilization, you know, I make warriors, so I always have warriors. I can do warrior things or I have a granary so I can produce grain. Okay. Here, my actions are based on what I draw this turn. So if I don't draw, explore lands, I can't explore lands to grow my lands. Okay. And, you know, they're claiming that, you know, it's going to be able to play, uh, it's going to be a 10 player game online. So that's the Royale thing where you're knocking yeah. people out. Uh, that matches will be under an hour, which if that's true, that's big news. Because I love Civilization. The problem yeah. is one of those games takes eight, nine hours. And a lot of that time is downtime. Like, oh, I need money so I can get my next troop or I need to do this. Here, that, that's all taken care of with the cards. Like, oh, I need money. I drew the money card. I get to play this. Um, it, it's currently not funded quite yet, but it is fairly new to Kickstarter right now. Uh, they, they are halfway there. They are just under 10000 and they're looking for 25000 uh, But they have 22 days to go, so it ends April 13th. Okay. Um, it has a pretty low entrance point. So they're only asking $15 okay. to get uh, a Steam key for it. Um, and that gets you the game. So, not a bad price. It seems to be the first thing they've created. Uh, this, this group is called Main Tank Software. Uh, but from what I could see through uh, a lot of their videos that they put out, it looks good. It has it has that Civilization uh, 6 art style, which is one of the better Civilization games out there. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It's probably a game I might back for only 15 bucks. If I can hop in on a Civilization game for an hour and just mess around in it, you know, it's something that I think... I think it's something you would like too, since that's you you played a lot of Civilization. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're claiming to be a 4X game in under an hour, so okay. hefty goals. Alright. That was Hex Archie. Hard to say. Um, ending on April 13th. Alright. So my final game today again comes from Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And it is Motor City. Uh, strategic engine building roll and write game. So I got two roll and writes. Yeah. Um, and this is from Motor City Gameworks. They've also done Three Sisters, which was very popular, mm -hmm. and Fleet the Dice game, which is very popular. Yeah. So I expect this one to be pretty popular. Uh, and again, it ends March 30th, and it has funded. Yeah. Uh, they, they well met their funding goal. And uh, 29 bucks is, is what this one is. Uh, they only they have a pledge for the 29 bucks or for like a bigger group. But uh, so Motor City, uh, you oversee engineering, assembly, and more to run an automotive empire. Okay. Um, and you have the different um, areas of basically the uh, factory. So these areas are represented by tracks that you mark off as you make progress. Uh, many of the tracks are interconnected with other elements of the game, giving you bonuses along the way and opportunities to unlock more points. Okay. Uh, advancing on all these tracks offers various amounts of points, advancements, and bonuses. Uh, the game only lasts eight rounds. So it's, it's very quick uh, Roll and write. Each round, uh, you roll colored dice, and based on the number of players, and place them on spaces on the action chart. Uh, based on the value and color, uh, each player drafts one die and uses it. Okay. 
Uh, once everyone is drafted, their die twice. All players get to use the remaining dice on the action chart. And each die you draft lets you do uh, three things, uh, which is collect uh, the bonuses of the spaces from which you remove the die, uh, take the action associated with the space from which you remove the die, or take the action of the space on your sheet where you place the die. Uh, then you receive action associated with those spaces uh, of the remaining die. After eight rounds, you score points for your progress and, uh, in engineering, assembly, testing, and other various departments. Mm -hmm. um, and whoever has the most points wins. Uh, end of the game, after eight rounds, uh, you total your final score. Compare it against the chart uh, that's in the book as well. Uh, and to see what... Uh, model car you've made uh you know i i know that the the top car they have is corvette mm -hmm. uh, most of their their products seem to be gm related um which is okay uh i am yeah. a dodge guy so i wish it would have been you know so in this the, game the top trying... one would have been a charger challenger but a corvette so in this game are you trying to make one whole complete car like the same or is this like the johnny cash on one piece at a time or, you know, I have this year model. And no, this year. so you're not actually, so you're trying to build cars, sell cars, market cars. There are different parts. Um, so there, there's engineering, assembly, testing, and, and so you, you're trying to get your tracks up. Okay. So that, you know, if you get so far on one track, it helps raise this track and helps raise this. Um, so the, the five actions you have allow you to fill space in, um, in one department on your sheet. So there's like a speedometer action, a sales department, a testing department, an engineering department, production department. Um, upgrading actions allow you to spend money to permanently double or triple the amount of bubbles you fill in. Okay. Um, researching allows you to advance on the research track. So you're, you're trying basically to... Get your, to build your cars efficiently, sell them at the right time. Um, I think it sounds like a really cool role, right? Mm -hmm. And that is uh, Motor City uh, by Motor City Games, and it ends March 30th. Okay. Uh, my last pick for this month for crowdfunding is not a game. It's not even a video game. It's a game accessory. Okay. It is a, a card box with uh, drawers in it, uh, is from, I just looked up the name two seconds ago, I can never remember, it's uh, Tellurian Community College, is the people putting it out, uh, he is a YouTuber, okay, who has done for, I think he's on like eight, nine years already of doing this, and he just reviews, you know, deck boxes, folios, uh, sleeves, like anything like that. Okay. Like accessories for like magic yeah. gathering and TCGs. Yeah, those are collectible card games. Yeah. Um, so. No, TCGs are trading card games. Like CCGs. Yes, that's why we're talking about games. games. Yeah. Um, so I've watched his videos for a couple of years now. Even though I don't play magic or anything like that, it's interesting to see, you know, what companies are putting out there, you know. Sleeve wise, box wise, solution wise for card holding. Like, I've just learned from him, like, in the past couple of years, that triple sleeving your cards are a thing. Hmm. Why would you triple sleeve a card? Because you really don't want to anything to have to. Or you don't want to send it to get graded in one of those hard plastic <laughs> yeah, things. Get, I mean, get, the get, people get, that get the Pokemon cards graded? Yeah. You know, how do you play with that? Well, I think, I think they're getting them graded to resell, but, but if you're triple, triple, uh, sleeving, sleeving your cards. Just get the one touch. One touch all your cards. Yeah. <laughs> Which this box does fit those. Fit one touches? Yeah. You could you could have a, a deck of one touches. Huh. The, this this box he created is so fascinating to me. Which is, you know, when people do something so long they, they know what they like yeah. and how to improve upon it. You know. One of his biggest complaints to always are, you know, everything in these boxes lying flat, so you can never get your fingers in there. Yeah. So he has his things where they have finger groups so you can pull out your decks. Or with the, the tuck boxes on the side, the, the things pull down so you can pull them out. Yeah. You know, just simple little things. He, he teamed with uh, 
Game Genix, which is a, one of the bigger names in deck boxes yeah. out there. Uh, it is a limited run, you know, because Game Genix is just going to make whatever is backed in this this thing, which he's doing very well. It, it launched a couple of days ago, three days ago. He's got 22 days left, so April 14th is when it, he's already at a million and a half dollars raised. Uh, like I said, he's one of the more popular YouTubers when it comes yeah. to... You know accessories, because if that's all you do, yeah, you know that's the guy you trust. Yeah. Um, no, now I'm I'm really thinking, you know, for uh, baseball highlights, mm -hmm. one touch in every card. You should. Of course, though, the free agent deck would be floor to ceiling. Yeah. You need like five hundred one touches. You should get everything from Marvel Legendary in one touch at all. Yeah. Have like four trunks worth of cards. Or Dominion. Yep. D Dominion, at that point, you're buying, like, a, a travel trunk from, like, the 1800s. But, uh, you know, I, I I think I think this is a channel that I've appealed to more than just people that play Magic. Cause, yeah. Like, you, you collect baseball cards. Yeah. So, you know, you don't very you don't sleeve any of yours outside of either top loaders or yeah. that. I mean, there'd be no reason to put, like, a sleeve that has a full color on the back yeah. of a card. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he reviews penny sleeves, and the, the new things are, like, the side loaders, mm. I think they're called. Mm. Those are, like, the new penny sleeves. Uh, never seen him review any, like, uh, the card sheets. Yeah. But, but, no, I mean, this, this does sound like a, a, a cool thing. And when does it end? Uh, April 14th. I realized I didn't say what the name of the project actually is. Yeah. It's called the Academic okay. 133XL. And uh, how much is it? Uh, the price point is forty five dollars. Ooh, well, but I, again, I know for some of these boxes, that's yeah. what they go for. Yeah, I mean this one. It, I mean, granted, for you know the three thousand count boxes for baseball cards, it's like five bucks, but that's all cardboard. Now I I, I I'm not gonna pretend like I speak magic because <laughs> I I don't understand. I know the game, but I don't like know enough. Never Kazam. I just spoke magic. But, like, apparently this box can hold three commander decks plus tokens. Okay. I don't know what that means. Apparently that's a big deal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, it looks cool. Um, uh, there, there's not many uh, Kickstarter, uh, what do you call them, when they hit the things? Stretch goals? Yeah, there's not many stretch goals, mainly because they want to go to the box. The only thing I think they've really stretch goal. Are these these unique thing called uh, seismorphic dividers, which are like these foam dividers that stretch and hmm. shrink. So if you have empty space, actually that would be really good for some of my card boxes. Just cards in general. Yeah. And I was yeah watching. because in my pirates box that I have, mm -hmm. I got foam blocks in there, which don't they say the same. But this yeah. this is like yeah. accordions. Yeah, that that is a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's a great idea just for people who collect sports cards or, yeah. or any type of cards. Yeah. I mean, he could have probably just got away with that. And yeah. The, uh, the other thing is tokens yeah. because Magic has a lot of tokens. It, can so, you, I guess... Can you just back it for those? Yeah. Maybe. It's yeah, yeah. an add-on. Well, yeah, you back it at a dollar, and then when it comes to the thing you win subject to the box, you just go to the add-on. Add and how much are those? Four. Four dollars? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I might have to consider that because that would really be helpful, especially, too, in my uh, Harrisburg Senators player box because mm -hmm. it's only about half full. Yeah. And my, my Tampa Bay player box. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it, he says it goes from, like, two inches down to, like, a centimeter. So I'd still need a couple of them. But that's... But they're adjustable. Yeah. Which is nice. Like, as you keep putting it in, it will shrink. Yeah. So, yeah. That, that's great right there. Just that add-on. To tell them to run another campaign. Just, just for that, yes. Um, I mean, everything does look to be high quality. I mean, yeah. it's one of those things that if this is what you're known for, yeah, you, yeah. you really don't want to fail. Yeah. So, yeah, th this is a, a really good Kickstarter, especially, um, again, not for me on the, the magic or card game-wise, but for me on my sports card-wise, that, that sounds awesome. And you said it ends April 1st? No, April... April 14th. Yeah. Um, yeah, that sounds like a great one. What Kickstarters are you backing? Uh, or just uh, 
crowdsource games in general. Yep. Uh, I know GameFound's a big one now, and apparently they're still on Indiegogo. Yeah, not much on the. I had the little card. But um, let us know what you're back in, or if you got anything in recently that was um, crowdsourced. I know Tim just got uh, Massive Darkness 2. Yeah. That was the big one that just recently came in that was crowdsourced. So with that, again, hit the thumbs up, hit the bell, like, subscribe, share the video. That does help. We're getting closer to 50 subscribers. Yep. Um, with that, uh, look out for the rest of Monthly Mel, yep. and stay sweet.